It's a decision that could change the way the world produces food, and already it's being called Frankenfish. It's set to soon be approved as the first genetically modified animal fit for human consumption. The company behind the fish, Aqua Bounty Technologies, says it's part Atlantic salmon, part ocean pout, with one end result. Salmon that grow twice the rate of normal fish, maturing in only 18 months instead of three years. But is this introduction of GM fish healthy or very dangerous for us? For more on this, we have Jeffrey Smith, the executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology. He is also the author of Seeds of Deception. Hey there, Jeffrey. It's always great to see you. Now, uh, my first question to you. You know, I had salmon last night for dinner. If the FDA had approved this fish before I ate it, would I have known it was genetically engineered? It's not clear whether the FDA will require labeling. But if you ask the consumers of the United States, 95% want genetically modified products labeled, whether it's the seeds that are already grown in the fields or the fish that they hope to improve. So, the, unfortunately, the FDA is mandated with promoting the biotechnology industry, so they ignore the desires of 9 out of 10 Americans to promote the interests of a handful of companies. That's very shocking. 9 out of 10 Americans want this food to be labeled, but it's not. I want to know, is the FDA rushing to have the salmon approved without testing it? Well, their requirements are very scant at best. They have right now been given materials and data from the company themselves that, that wants the salmon to be approved. And if you look at it, it's ridiculous to, to evaluate the safety of this food with no long-term feeding studies, sample sizes as large as six, and lots and lots of questions unanswered. So although the FDA has looked at it supposedly for 10 years, the amount of data that they looked at it, looked at, it was not enough to guarantee safety. And I, for one, will certainly not consume this genetically modified salmon if approved. It's very shocking. Now, I want our audience to take a look at what this genetically modified salmon would look like next to a natural salmon. So, essentially, what you're seeing right here, that bigger, more succulent fish, is genetically modified. You know, would you prefer to eat that one or the smaller one? That smaller one is the natural fish. It does not have any preservatives, and it has no genetically modified ingredients inside of it. Now, on a more creative note, our graphics department made this fish. It's sort of chopped up with uh, frankenfish, if you will, and it looks like real fish in the, in the middle. That's not real. That, of course, is courtesy of our graphics department. Now, what can we expect from this fish, uh, Jeffrey, as far as the way it tastes? Will it have a different taste to it? Will we know that it's obviously genetically modified uh, versus something that's natural? Well, there has been no discussion whatsoever about the taste. I think that the company probably wouldn't have included a salmon that had a different taste. And they certainly don't want it labeled because they know most Americans are very uncomfortable with genetically modified foods in general and genetically modified animals in particular. Americans are much more concerned about genetically modifying animals, and yet the biotech industry has plans in the works to genetically modify not only the fish, but mosquitoes and pigs, a whole variety of livestock. They basically want to squeeze the nature out of nature and force these animals to be better, better for the bottom line. But that doesn't always mean it's better for our health or the environment. And in this case, environmentalists and the healthcare professionals that have looked at it are really outraged at the consideration of this being approved. It's shocking the biotech industry is trying to clone everything to increase our food supply. Now, why is the American food industry moving more towards genetically modified foods, whether it's produce or what you say, animals? Do we have this addiction? Are we asking for this food, or is this the food that we're being given? We're certainly not asking for it. In fact, I would say that part of the food industry is now moving away from it. In 2009, the fastest growing store brand label claim was GMO free. In this year, it's the fifth fastest health and wellness claim among all types of products. October is non-GMO month, 10, 10, 10 is non-GMO day. And we in fact predict a tipping point of consumer rejection against GMOs and Supermarket News, a major trade journal for the food industry, predicted that this year would see an unprecedented upsurge of consumer concern and awareness about GMOs, which ultimately I think could force it out of the market. Jeffrey, what can we expect from this food? Can we predict that it will have what kind of health effects on the human population? I mean, there have been separate studies looking at GM uh, 
corn, GM, soybean. But there's obviously nothing testing how this will affect the human body if we consume GM fish. So what are your predictions? Well, it's unfortunately, it's kind of a genetic roulette. You make some changes here in a not well understood system and things can arise years later, generations later, or in ways that you would never predict to look at. Since GMOs in terms of the plants were introduced, we've seen animal feeding studies that show things like immune system problems, reproductive problems, accelerated aging, dysfunctional regulation of insulin and cholesterol. We have American Academy of Environmental Medicine urging all doctors to, to, to prescribe non-GMO diets to all patients because of these kind of results. However, the FDA distorts or denies this evidence and never requires follow-up when adverse findings appear. I'm afraid that if these fish were introduced, since there's no post-marketing surveillance, no long-term clinical trials, and not even, not even any long-term animal feeding studies, we may end up introducing problems or, exast- or causing a worsening of existing problems and never know it, never know that the reason is the genetically modified animals we're eating. That's really incredible that the uh, American people could be treated as a human experiment for this kind of food, but we'll see where it goes and if the FDA does approve this salmon. That was Jeffrey M. Smith. He's the executive director of the Institute for Responsible Technology. He's also the author of Seeds of Deception. Always good to have you. Thank you very much. Great to be here.